Hi everyone, I'm Ali Graymond. I'm an OCD recovery coach with more than 10 years of experience helping people recover from OCD. Prior to that, I had severe OCD myself that I fully recovered from and as do my clients. So if you wonder, can you fully recover from OCD? Absolutely, yes, you can. Today, I wanted to give you a few tips on how to recover from OCD at the fastest rate possible. So first of all, look at every single day as an opportunity to do exposure work. And at every single time you get triggered as an exposure, that is a good thing because you need those exposures to recover. So if you're triggered right now, if you're having a hard time, instead of looking at it how we always look, how terrible this is, and I understand you feel terrible, but look at it as, okay, this is my opportunity to practice. And I find that it really helps with clients to treat OCG recovery like a game, but like a very structured game. That on the one side, you have your plan, you're reducing every single day, you're tracking the time, you're tracking the compulsions, and you have a daily plan on reducing the compulsions. At the same time, you are accountable, so you're keeping up with the plan, that you are not taking days off, um, that you're seeing results but when you see the results you don't slow down and you continue the results because a lot of the times this is kind of a an issue when people start to feel good in recovery they start to slow down on their recovery because they get comfortable you know, they're not in a terrible state like they were when they started but that's a mistake because you're not really out of it yet i would say actually the opposite is do recovery work, get out of the theme that you're currently in, and then continue to do recovery work, applying it to your everyday life as well. Because a person with OCD was already born sensitive, and that sensitivity can send you one day back into OCD if you don't take care of it. So anything that you are reacting to a lot, try to work on that as well after the recovery. But while you're still in this, you need to be accountable and treating it like a game. Why? Because that part of the brain that creates this issue, it works like clockwork. You can kind of, um, you know, probably yourself that whenever you have an OCD uh, trigger, you could have seen it a mile away. Uh, you could have expected it if you knew how the trigger was going to go, you know, about how long it's going to last, you know, how you're going to react. I mean, it always is this repetitive um, situation. So the trigger, your response, how long it comes out, when the next one comes, if it's getting you worse in the morning, if it's getting you worse in the evening, all this is a part of your specific game. And if you anticipate it and look at it like, all right, it's morning, it's go time, go ahead, OCD, bring me whatever it is that you were going to bring me, my usual theme, go ahead, let's make it happen. And then your brain sees that you're not scared and the pull to get you into anxiety is a lot less. So it's basically getting good at the game and using every moment of the day to practice. If you're doing work, for example, with a therapist, your recovery work does not stop at the office. Your recovery work is every moment of the day because thoughts are with you every moment of the day. Or if you're doing physical compulsions, every time you do a physical compulsion, evaluate what can you reduce in it. With people who um, have physical compulsions, what we usually do, and I should probably do a separate video on it, but it, uh, let me know in the comments if you're interested in hearing more about physical compulsions. But um, what we usually do is we reduce from each one, just reducing a little tiny bit and then working up from there. So nobody um, is going to, for example, you know, I'm t talking more for clients, right? But, uh, but nobody's going to tell you, um, oh, you have to reduce everything all at once, right? No, but see, okay, say you're doing a hand washing compulsion. Hand washing is actually a good example. I'm going to give you guys this example because we use it frequently with clients. Not that I actually see hand washing a lot, but you can apply it to different situations. So when people do hand washing, they do it very specific way usually. So they'll do, um, you know, washing each finger specific way, washing hand specific way. So there's this uh, uh, very long routine. This is pretty much across... Um, most cases, right? And at the end, the person will say, and then I just do say the final wash one more time. And I hear this from client after client after client. So um, that last 
part that, well, it's fine, it's done, but, you know, just, just to make sure, I'll just do it one more time. That last part you can remove. So try to apply that to your physical compulsion situations or to your rumination um, in a way of, well, I checked Google this many times, but I'll just check one more time. Or um, I've done my full compulsion, but, you know, I can, I don't, I, I can do one more thing at the end, but I don't probably have to. Remove from the end. Because the very first part of the compulsion that you do is very much critical and um, it's not something that most people are willing to let go of but to w whatever is the last one there's not that much pressure because you've done the bulk of it already so you feel fairly safe and then take away the last and then the one next to the last one and so on and so forth but use every opportunity you have in the course of a day to practice this so every time something comes up am I going to do it or not okay maybe I have to do it fine how much do I have to do it? Do I have to do it 100% of the time or 100% uh, all the way or 90% or maybe I can delay doing it. So manipulating either the compulsion or the timing in which you do it. Same thing with rumination. Your brain pulls you to ruminate right now, but you're on the clock because you're tracking the time and you can't. So you're like, mm, not for another hour or whatever works for you. So kind of um, instead of, OCD running the show, you are now running the show and you're saying, okay, I'm going to do it like this, but not like that. And as you continue to do this, OCD will start to decrease. And again, the accountability, the accountability, the one really good thing about it, because I know a lot of people are like, I don't want to be accountable. I don't want to track. I get it. I'm not the type of person that likes to track things, but guys, please believe me. It really, really works. And the one thing with accountability that's uh, um, kind of overlooked is when you start to see that, hey, look, I'm doing pretty good. Look at where my numbers were, you know, a week ago. Look at where they are now. Look, I've stuck to the schedule. I had my number goal for each day. I've done it. And look at the results. And you start to feel good about yourself. Your self-esteem that's been taken away by OCD starts to go up. You start to feel good. And then as you start to feel good and as you start to see results there on paper, you start to be able to do more things because naturally you're looking back at it and looking, hey, I'm safe. Look, I've done all this stuff. I'm safe so I can, I can continue to do more and I can finish this. And this is how recovery is done. And um, the going back to how to recover in the fastest way, at the fastest rate, don't skip days. That every day you're doing something and add to it. So you did a small thing. Okay, do a little bit more tomorrow, then a little bit more tomorrow. But again, you need to be tracking for that to happen because the tracking versus not tracking is the same idea as with a diet. We are all on a diet permanently. Am I right? So being on a diet does not guarantee you any results. We're just on a diet. But if you say, hey, I'm tracking, I'm reducing, this is this many calories I ate today, I also did this exercise, I did this exercise, you know, who's gonna, who's gonna lose weight faster, right? So accountability really does speed up your progress. And then you also cannot take days off unless they are planned days. For taking days off, I would say, uh, obviously, like I said, don't take days off, but if it's a holiday, if it's uh, some important event, you know, um, don't do exposure work right before because you don't want to set yourself up into a situation and be uh, triggered and not paying attention and those kinds of things. So I hope this helped. Thank you so much for listening. If you would like to do one-on-one -on -one recovery program, everything is available through youhaveocd.com. You can sign up from there. You can book a time. I will be doing more uh, live streaming as well because everybody seemed to be really enjoying that. So that's going to be coming up probably probably later in the evening because I find people are kind of back from work and the other side of the world is waking up. So it seems like it's a better time. So um, for now, we're going to do it around the evening time. So I hope you join us on that. I will see you with more videos tomorrow.